Hey everyone, well, welcome to a, another fantastic episode of the Lindstrom Report. Um, I would like to talk about personal branding today. In fact, let me just take you back to one of my philosophies. I fundamentally believe we all have three bank accounts. The first bank account is, yes, you guessed it, that's where we earn our salaries, right? The second bank account is the one where we learn from and we learn throughout life. And if we don't learn, I fundamentally believe that we are dying slowly. The third one is what I call your personal branding account. That's where you build your brand. And I think it's fair to say that increasingly, uh, we are realizing in our world at the moment that we actually are not putting enough effort into the branding account. Uh, we are really good at cashing in on the salary account, but I think it's also fair to say that there is no such thing as called a lifetime job anymore, right? I mean, haven't you realized it when you sit behind the screen and the only connection you have with your company is a link? I mean, what doesn't hold you back from not just having one link, but having two links or five links, meaning five different employees, meaning you have suddenly a freelance job, meaning how do you then get new customers, meaning you have to build your own personal brand? And that's really where we're getting at at the moment. Now, this is not new. In fact, Tom Peters back in, I think it was 1984, started to talk about that through Brand You. But this is really going much further right now. So how do you build a personal brand? Well, I would claim that you have to focus on one word and own that very one word. And I want to just explain that for you for a second. So I'm going to use my little technology here and share with you how I build my own personal brand. So if you imagine that my key focus is brand, I'll put brand here in the middle, um, then how did I start owning that one word? Well, I began my journey by realizing I can't own the word brand with credibility in the beginning. So I decided to launch different concepts over time, which each of them were designed to secure an ownership and become hopefully the number one branding guy around. So the first one I said, well, that was clicks and mortar. That was being online and offline. I wrote another book about the web and how to build brands online. And then I wrote another book about kids and their relationships with brands. And I wrote another one about ethics and how we actually are building brands with ethics. And then I wrote another one which was about our senses. And then I wrote another one. Guess what? That was about neuroscience and how our brain works. And right now, squeezed in here is all about culture. And what I'm saying here is that as you start to focus on new aspects of your one word, suddenly you become that simple word. You become the brand. And this is really my message to you guys. I've learned that creativity is to combine two ordinary things in a new way. And this is what I've done all my life. It is to take neuro and marketing and create the term neuromarketing. It is to take the senses and marketing and create sensory marketing. It really is to take one foothold in the one word you want to own and one foothold in a new world. So what does it mean for you? Well, my advice to you is to own one brand. Think about it. Volvo owns the word safety. Google owns the word search. What is the one word you want to own? Now, the reason I'm telling you all this stuff is because if you do not build your brand right now, it's too late, in my opinion. I think in the future, the way people will be employed is not just necessarily based on how good credentials they have or the education. It's also how many followers they have. I actually do think that followers will start to determine if you have a good chance of getting a job or not both as a CEO, as a middle-level manager, or at any point in the organization. Um, I think the first place we're seeing it now is in the fashion industry. I was really surprised to learn that photo models no longer are valued based on their look only. In fact, the number one factor for photo models is how many followers they have, because they know these followers will help you to build the brand. Now, I know this is an extreme case, but from your point of view, that's really my message here. What is your one word? What are the things around which you want to establish, which will give you that credibility? And most importantly, how do you stay consistent around that? 
So that's the reason why I brought Mark Schaeffer, which is a marketing consultant, but he's also an author of nine books. And one of the books actually talked about this very topic. His latest book is called Accumulative Advantage, How to Build Momentum for Your Ideas, Business and Life Against All Odds. And I think there's a lot of all odds now. And uh, by the way, he's actually studied under Peter Drucker, which is, I guess, one of the most iconic business leaders and teachers of all time. And of course, he's also helped a lot of brands, among them Adidas, Johnson & Johnson's, Jeeve, Life Science, and I can go on. So with no further ado, I would love to welcome Mark on my show. Mel welcome, Mark. Oh, Martin, it's such a delight to be here. And uh, your counsel about personal branding certainly is, is right on. And uh, you know, the whole idea of the bank account, I was like nodding and cheering uh, because I, as you know, you and I connected on this during the pandemic, when the pandemic hit, my business crashed. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a speaker, I'm a consultant, everything crashed. And by the summer, everything came back. And I wrote a blog post, Martin, that said, look, I was, for all these years, I've been putting deposits in the account of my personal brand. And in the, in the summer, I started to withdraw those deposits because when things went wrong, people came back to me because they know me and they trust me. So your, uh, your advice and your counsel on personal branding is uh, certainly in line, not only with my philosophy, but my personal experience. Now, Mark, give me a sense of the, t the top three pieces of advice you give people today in hindsight of everything you've been through, building personal brands for a lot of people, writing a book about it. What are the essence where you say people just don't get it, but this is where you really have to focus? Well, three quick things. And, and uh, as you mentioned, I, I, I wrote this book called Known, which is a very personal, a very popular book on personal branding. It's, it's definitely my most popular book. Number one, here's a simple thing that everyone can do. You need to, st it's like you were talking about, you need to find your word. And one of the ways to do that is to finish this sentence. Only we, if you're a business, or only I, if you're a person who's trying to stand out. And that takes a lot of work. That takes some thought. But I've never been able to find a person or a business that hasn't been able to do that. Number two is that content is really the fuel of the personal brand. Just what we're doing today, right? This is connecting with your audience. It's helping to build credibility. It's helping to reinforce what you're known for. So this is where a lot of people get overwhelmed, Martin, because they say, oh, do I need to be on Facebook? Do I need to blog? It's not that hard. You have four choices, basically. Do you want to write something? Is it audio like a podcast? Is it video like YouTube or streaming? Or is it something visual that you'd see on Instagram, Instagram or Pinterest? That's it. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, those are distribution channels. So you need to think about your content. Then the third thing I would say is consistency. I had a fellow tell me one time, Martin, he said, oh, blogging doesn't work. I wrote five blog posts in 2015 and nothing ever happened. It, it, it takes a lot of consistency. There's no such thing as an overnight success. As you said, you wrote book after book after book. You've written white papers. You give speeches. You do video like this and you don't give up and you're always out there. You're generous. You're brilliant. But, but with Mark, your let's be frank here. I, I, you and I are lucky because it's kind of our living. Yeah. If I work at Comedy X, where my primary duty is to do the work here, how on earth can I justify you know, posting a new post two times a week on LinkedIn and, and, and all that stuff? What is the right balance here? Well, there's, there's no cookie cutter answer. Uh, and and I, I think that's one of the problems that we have today is that people think that there is a cookie cutter answer. They read blog posts about content marketing from content evangelists and everybody needs to be on clubhouse now and everybody needs to be on TikTok. 
And, and I think it needs to be looked at very, very strategically. I think we need to look at, again, getting back to what are, what are our core values? What is our message? What, uh, if you're in a highly technical field, you probably need to be writing something to help people understand it. If you're in something visual, it, it, it might be video. So there really isn't a cookie cutter answer. And that's one of my big frustrations is that I think marketing has been dumbed down. It's, it's been oversimplified. The other thing, and, I've, and you've written about this as well, is that I think a lot of people look at creating content or creating something on social media as everything there is about marketing. And they're forgetting about positioning and pricing and, and promotion and, and the, the great solid foundations of marketing. Those things still work. So we need to remember that marketing and, and your branding is a holistic thing. It's not just Instagram and Facebook posts. Yeah, well said. Now I want to do a shout out to Joey, to Jeff, to Lynn, to Aldo, to Silvana, to Nicholas, to Alpenza. And also, by the way, this wonderful lady, Blanket, she actually said to me that her word is adaptable. And I just want to give a shout out to everyone out there. Could you do me a favor, everyone? Would you mind writing your name, where you're from, and your one word. And I'm asking you to do this because this is not easy. This is not easy at all. Now I'm going to put a mark on the test, on the spot now. I'm going to give you my little one word, which is disrupting or disruptive. So I'm actually typically very direct, and my clients will admit when they see me, oh my God, Martin is in the room, he's disrupting our whole company right now. But that has become my brand, and I always challenge people's point of view and try to see the view from a different point of view. So, Mark, give me a sense of what is your one word? My my word would be signal. I, I think if you look at, at, the, at the trajectory of my work, just like you illustrated how all of your work has sort of surrounded this word brand, all of the work I've uh, been creating really – looks at how do we come become the signal, the beacon in this world of overwhelming noise. Uh, we're in this era right now, Martin, of infinite media. You know, when you and I were sort of growing up in the business, we had a few television networks, we had daily newspapers, you had trade shows, and you, it was pretty predictable. And now there's more media being created by people than by media companies. And we, we, had, we used to be in a world of limited media where you needed to have a license to broadcast something. Now we're in the era of infinite media and everyone is trying to compete for attention. And there's really an art and science today, which is evolving and it's changing to stand out today. If you're following the rules of content from three years ago, not gonna work. We, we need, you know, social media just isn't enough. SEO isn't enough. Being great isn't enough. One of my frustrations is a lot of people say, oh, the problem is, isn't that there's too much content. There's too much bad content. Who says there's great content out there? There's great content competing with you and me. And you yeah. and I, as you know, we've got to fight to be superior every, and absolutely. every day. I agree with you. Let me just read some of the words which are coming in right now. So there's some amazing words here. There is um, share, purposeful, individuality, trust, differentiation, consistency, innovative, valuable, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, I want to give you guys a piece of advice here. Um, trust is taken. I'm sorry about that. Someone decided to take trust. Because here's the issue. What I've learned is you cannot choose generic words which everyone has. Here's my base philosophy to combine two new, two other things in a new way, right? And then it becomes something. Trust is something you earn. Yeah. It's not something I, I can't say to you, Mark, trust me, trust me, trust me. Then you for sure wouldn't trust me, right? right. So you really have to find something uh, which is truly unique. And the more unique it is, the easier it is for you to work with it. And then I think I told some of you guys this 
the story the other day, but if you take a look at Volvo, which owns one word safety, how did they get there? They were the first to invent the three point seat belt. They're the first to invent the airbags uh, inside and outside the car. They were the first to invent 24 seven light. They were the first to invent the seat belt alarm. And I still hate them for that. <laughs> they actually combine two ordinary things in a new way. And, yeah. and that's yeah. really my, my advice. Now, Mark, I want to ask you a second question. I want to talk to you about a birthday cake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, one of the things that you and I have had some wonderful exchanges about is how is marketing changing during the pandemic? And there was this little story that I, that I experienced that I think has a powerful message about what's changing. So I went over to my, 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 my daughter-in-law's house and she showed me this video on Instagram and she was furious. She said, look at this. My two-year-old nephew is blowing out candles on a birthday cake. How can he be doing that during this pandemic? I will never blow out birthday candles again. Now you might think, oh, Mark, that is really a weird story. But let's dissect, what are we hearing here? Number one, what this young woman is telling us is, I will never be the same. I will never, that is no small thing. I will never blow up candles on a birthday cake again. And as you've written so beautifully, Martin, in your uh, biology, the small book you put out, consumers are changing in millions of ways, large and small. And so this is a time for marketers to be humble and reconnect and, and reimagine where our customers really are. So here's message number two. This birthday cake was a Barney birthday cake. Now, Barney was this purple dinosaur that was basically retired as a children's character in the 1990s. The reason the mother had this birthday cake, it meant something to her more than the kid, right? She wanted comfort. She wanted nostalgia. This is another big lesson. We are in an era where people have been so afraid. They're so filled with fear. They want to be assured. Safety, assurance is a huge, huge trend. I was reading about this trend, Martin, about zero user interface, no touching anything, right? Like a, an ATM at a bank or using a credit card swipe. Companies are working on technology so people don't touch anything anymore. That's lesson number two. Lesson number three, why wasn't she at the birthday party? Why was she experiencing this online why, instead of being there? Because she couldn't be. And this is an important lesson. In 2019, the internet was a utility. Today, the internet is our heartbeat. It's how we work. It's how we play. It's how we entertain ourselves. It's how we connect emotionally. It's how we date. The internet has become something more profound and it's not going to go back uh, the other way. So these are three small lessons from this story that I think are, are profound and important lessons for, for marketers today. It's a time to be humble, Martin. Yeah. It's a time to rethink everything we thought we knew about our, our connections to our customers. Now, what a fascinating story. I want to add to that because in, in reality, what I think is fascinating is that, and I've talked about that the other day, what we're seeing right now is what I call the eighth entry point. It's the first global universal behavioral change we're seeing because of COVID-19. And, and by that, I mean the fact that um, we've had seven entry points. An entry point is something so profound that you will change your behavior. Think about it. You're expecting a newborn baby. Well, suddenly you see baby strollers everywhere, right? It changes your behavioral pattern. It's a bit like what you see when you go through Ikea. It actually takes all seven life stages. Now, this is the first time we're seeing the eighth entry point as a consequence of COVID-19. And as I'm talking a lot about is the idea of that we are suppressing ourselves for the sense of touch because we don't touch anyone anymore. And that's the reason why the sales of pets have gone up some nearly 250%. It's the reason why pet food is going up and in ways we've never seen before. It's also the reason why I would predict that we are now seeing people buying much more tactile products because they simply 
do not have contact with anyone around. So, Mark, I, I so agree with what you're saying. And then I just want to add a little story to you with um, with the whole idea of, of the idea of um, the birthday cake. We actually did a study on birthday cakes. And what we realized was that um, kids, when they blow up the candles and sing a song at a birthday cake, it tastes 71% better. Did you know that? <laughs> According to your study, then if you don't do it. So if we are killing that blowing up those candlelights and killing the song because yeah. of the virus, yeah, there's going to be a lot of complaints around. And in fact, there was a New York Times article the other day showing that the number of people complaining on Amazon that the candlelights have no smell in them anymore yeah. uh, has gone up dramatically and is directly correlated with people losing the sense of smell yeah. as a consequence of COVID-19. It just shows you... Yeah, How we, are, we are we are in an era of unintended consequences. <laughs> oh, totally, truly, I truly see. we are. Now we had to wrap up in a second or two. Do you want to ask a question to me? I'll leave the floor open here for fun. Well, first of all, I just wanted to uh, compliment you on on your book. I got I ordered it right away in pre order, and then I got to see an advanced copy. And I just want to reinforce to everyone that this is absolutely a delightful book. And here's the thing that really delighted me about this book. It is also Martin's funniest book. This is a very entertaining book. I literally laughed out loud when I was reading some of his descriptions. And I was also nodding as I was reading some of his case studies about things that just don't make sense. So this is a book I, I highly recommend. I'm recommending it to my entire audience. And so uh, congratulations, Martin. It, it's, it's the right book that we need right now. And it's very relevant to this context of, uh, you know, we don't, I don't think we have a lot of room for, for, for the BS that we've put up with uh, over, over, over the years. You know, one of the things that I thought was amazing is when COVID hit and all of a sudden people had new license to break the rules and get things done fast. And I think that is part of the cultural change that's happening right now. So your book really is, is right on target. And it's, I, 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 uh, I loved it. Thank, th thank you very much. And I just want to warn all the viewers right now that I did pay Mark to say that no. it was not cheap. No, I want no, to say no. that. <laughs> that's that's, that's not you, true. Yeah. <laughs> It, mean, it means the world to me, seriously. Listen, if people want to get hold of you, how do they get hold of you? Well, it's, it's uh, people can't remember how to spell Schaefer all the time, but you can remember businesses grow. That's where you can find my blog, my podcast, The Marketing Companion, uh, my books we talked about known today, Marketing Rebellion, and then the new book that's out right now called Cumulative Advantage, how to build momentum for your life and your business. So uh, yeah, businessesgrow.com. You can find me, my social media connections, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to learn more about you. Beautiful. Well said. Thank you, Mark. Congratulations with your new book. I hope to hear much more about it. I know it's, it's just about to be released right now, so I'm sure we'll be in contact about it again. And with that, I just want to jump in and say that tomorrow I have another fascinating guest. Now, this person was part of setting up the company which is running the world of Warcraft. So it's basically one of the top computer games in the world. He was the CEO of that company. He also uh, was part of running the company called Crason Lackenwit, which is really Lackenlit, which is the number one travel agency in the world. And believe it or not, he also later on went on to uh, run Best Buy for ten years, nearly ten years, with a share price going up from eleven dollars to the hundreds of dollars over his tenure. Now he's a fantastic person. He's just left um, Best Buy as the CEO. He still sits on the board of Ralph Lauren and of Johnson & Johnson's. But I want to share with you tomorrow his amazing insight of how he ran those companies, how he turned them around, and what he did was were extraordinary. I think you will love him to death. So I can't wait to bid him welcome for tomorrow. In the meantime, I'll say common sense, sadly, is not that common. Let's try to bring it back. Take care, everyone. See you tomorrow. 